Thank you. It's wonderful to be here today. I am a graduate of Rochester Institute of Technology, um, so I feel very comfortable being here in this school. And my degree was in fine art. So I studied graphic design and realized that I didn't like sitting at a desk all the time, and I wanted to be more active. So fine art was the vehicle to get up and active. And my focus at RIT was um, really looking at um, what was going on in our culture. I graduated here in uh, just after 9-11. So a lot of my artwork has to do with social social issues that we're addressing. Uh, and I carry that into the community through my work uh, with Rochester Roots. Uh, I've been involved with this organization for 22 years. I started as a volunteer. I was a young mom. Um, I realized that I wanted the world my kids to grow up in to be different than the one that I was raised in. So I put my focus and my efforts on working with the youth in the city of Rochester. So I've been working with youth officially uh, for about 12 years now. This is the big, the big vision for, for our organization. And we would love to see a learning center and learning environment in every city in the USA. And every quadrant of a city should have a learning center and learning environment so that our young people learn uh, the decision-making skills that lead towards sustainability. We have to do that now if we're going to affect the future, we have to start with our young people. And you are the young people that are gonna carry this forward as well. So we use living systems as the foundation for all of our work. First and foremost, our living systems support our lives. Everything in this room is built out of a living system that was once out in our environment. So we have to be conscious of those natural resources. There are over 10 trillion microorganisms that support one vertebrate. That's amazing. We have to be very, very conscious of what we do when we use our natural resources and when we affect the soil um, with our technologies. That's largely the focus of our work and our research at Rochester Roots. We started out working with the Montessori Academy um, who had an abandoned greenhouse. It went unused for 30 years. We took the greenhouse, although it's not a highly functional technical greenhouse, we used it as a plant production facility to grow heirloom vegetables uh, that were dispersed through three school gardens in the city of Rochester. We focus on heirloom varieties of seeds. Um, we want to be con very conscious of the genetic diversity of the plant world. We grow, our, grow heirloom seeds, we save our own heirloom seeds so that they adapt to the natural environment within the city of Rochester. And then we disperse those heirloom seeds to community members as well. This half acre urban farm at Clara Barton School is a sanctuary in the middle of a uh, impoverished neighborhood. I work in impoverished neighborhoods in the city. You probably will not have that opportunity to see the other side of Rochester being here on the RIT campus. This, this half acre urban farm um, attracted uh, an organization called Sustainable Intelligence, who initiated and led an urban agriculture and community garden feasibility study for the city of Rochester. It was an 18-month study. That garden behind it, it looks like this. So there are abandoned houses that the city has been taking down. The, the city had the intention to remove houses, vacant houses, houses that were uh, not repairable anymore. So the vision was remove the houses, open up the lots next to the houses, and then offer them to the community um, through a permit process to develop community gardens. There are some neighborhoods in the city who have done that at schools or uh, in um, vacant parcels of land around the city of Rochester, and the city of Rochester is supportive of that. Before we made any decisions about what type of projects um, could possibly be implemented on vast amounts of vacant land in the city. We worked with sustainable intelligence uh, to create what's called an influence model. And the influence model doesn't go in with the idea or the concept uh, for a building or for a garden, but it, it asks the community if the city of Rochester were focused 
on developing urban agriculture and community gardens, how would that affect your well-being? So rather than eliciting uh, a solution, it elicits a response about your personal experience. How would that affect you? And so uh, stories come out. And this influence modeling through the stories of talking to 676 stakeholders, recognize that the high-level well-being outcomes would be, there would be financial outcomes, employment outcomes, education, health, ecosystem, public safety, and a sense of community. I love this process. And it gets the community involved um, so that they together collectively understand the system within which they're going to implement um, any project. All of our work begins with influence modeling. The study also um, uh, created a, a framework um, for implementing urban agriculture projects so that it takes it beyond just a garden program and into the workforce, uh, into entrepreneurism, into food system uh, work, farmers markets, fast food trucks, Etc. Again, living systems are the foundation of everything that we do on this planet. So you can start with growing food, but it inevitably it leads to um, skill building. It leads to product development. It leads to health and nutrition, careers, etc. So this frames out food education, food processing, food distribution, and food production. Simultaneously, Rochester Roots recognized within the influence modeling process that we could focus on education and affect the whole system. So if you focus on one aspect of it, that could lead to uh, uh, causal effects within the rest of the system. So I delved into really focusing on the educational system uh, and working with youth in pre-K through sixth grade predominantly. We did our own influence modeling after eight years of working with the city school district, uh, Sustainable Intelligence uh, worked with 176 students, teachers, and district administrators to create a model of the experiences and the outcomes that the teachers were getting above and beyond the fact that the kids were out working in a natural environment. This became the foundation for building a learning center, for designing a learning center. So rather than going in with my high idea of this is what has to be in a learning center, we sought first to understand the system that we could impact and then design the learning center around that. This learning center contains 12 laboratories that can help to address um, decision making for well-being, social systems, uh, educational systems, et cetera. New York State Department of Agriculture Markets found that very interesting and funded uh, the design of the learning center in, and or the learning environment. Together, on two acres of land, we can demonstrate the entire food system and begin to uh, retrain um, or create cul uh, a better cultural cognition around sustainability through that first interception with with the food system. So this learning center contains 24 uh, indoor, or 12 indoor and 12 outdoor laboratories where the community can learn about a wide variety of um, uh, projects. In the Claire Barton School Garden, we were also donated a high tunnel. A uh, high tunnel is used to extend the growing season and, and is especially necessary in a, a northern climate like ours where uh, we have snowfall, what seems like half of the year. So we want to be able to extend that growing season. In the community, uh, well, we, we all work together to build this high tunnel. But the community um, poked holes in the plastic. So allowing air to, to be released, allowing heat to be released. So RIT got attracted to this project and worked with us to design uh, an adaptable, what we call our adaptable high tunnel that could withstand an urban environment as opposed to a rural environment where you wouldn't necessarily have the community interacting with, with a high tunnel. 
that started down the track of working with RIT, uh, Kate Gleason School of Engineering, on year-long student projects uh, called the uh, Multidisciplinary Senior Design Team Projects. So over the course of a year, uh, we worked with RIT and students to design a high tunnel. Now, when you take a living environment and apply technology, you've you've now c disconnected the living environment through the technology. So where there used to be rainfall on the garden, you know, it's great that we wanted to extend the growing season, but when there's no rainfall on the garden, then you have to bring municipal water to it. So RIT said, well, let's collect the rainwater, put it into rain barrels, and then have it self-irrigate. That was one of the technologies that was applied. So we can still harness natural resources uh, and channel them into and down into the roots of the plants. Plants like natural rainwater. They don't not like municipal water, and they react differently. We then, with Montessori Academy, uh, have two year-long projects uh, where uh, the fifth and s uh, the third and fourth graders, yes, third and fourth graders, are working on a uh, horticult uh, horticulture. It's like a controlled laboratory in the classroom where they can actually take soil samples or contrast and compare soil types or seed types within the classroom, and then notice um, the differences. Are is is using one type of soil going to create more nutritious? vegetables as opposed to using another type of soil. So this is a test lab that we'll actually have in our classroom at the end of May that is designed and built by RIT, but working with my students on that. We also have a product, a product um, that's made from calendula flowers and comfrey in the garden. So my fifth and sixth graders were tasked with designing a new product and then having RIT build a uh, lip balm and skin salve assembly line so that they can process and scale up their product development. This is where ecosystem, the technology system, and the social system come together. Since 2004, we've been working with the Montessori Academy. It's a city school. It's not a private Montessori school. It's a unique, in, uh, unique school, um, which is rare for a Montessori school to be a public school. Um, but it's a wonderful environment and a hands-on environment. When we, Montessori moved to a different location uh, a couple years ago, and we were invited in um, and given a science lab, so we brought the outdoors in. Another way, we had to now engage with technology in a living system, so the social system with the ecosystem and a technology system indoors. So we're learning how to adapt and change um, to being indoors with living systems. To begin that process, we started with modeling. We developed curriculum frameworks. So this one in particular is on how can a student develop through a soil-based activity. So through these teacher practicums, um, we develop frameworks so that teachers can then uh, implement their own lesson plans, or with me, implement lesson plans focused on soil health, composting, worm bins, ooh and ah, you get a lot of ooh and ahs from uh, teachers, but more so from the students. They absolutely love working with living systems indoors in a classroom. Soil dyed t-shirts so they can understand these um, soil, texture of soil, dyes in soil, colors of soil, how soil changes across um, the geography of the nation. We brought in Cornell University to do a two-day conference called No Soil, No Life. So soil is key, um, again, to all our lives. Soil and the living systems within soil is key to our lives. We cannot forget that. We will... We will eliminate our populations without soil. <laughs> so we have to be very mindful of soil. So we wanted to learn from the experts about how to take urban soils that have been depleted, that may have toxins and contaminants, and change them into a healthy soil that's going to grow food and that's going to be smell good, help your community smell good, 
and et cetera. So we went through two day workshop with Cornell and, and Rochester City School District teachers. In our Bringing Science to Life After School program, we collaborate with Montessori, teach, uh, universities, uh, businesses, PhDs, and we all work together uh, on entrepreneurial projects. This is our urban sustainability laboratory at the Montessori School. It was a high school, and now it's been adapted for an elementary school. In order to solve the wicked problems of sustainability, these reoccurring problems, we always have to be mindful of social systems, ecosystems, and technology systems, and they co-create and co-evolve together. You can't have one without the other. And we do see economics as part of the social system rather than as a separate system on its own. W working with students, I, I do influence modeling with students as well. And I can do that with uh, three-year-olds. And I can do that with six-year-olds. I can do that with 12-year-olds. I can basically do that with anybody just by asking a question. What is a system of science? And then I listen and I record and I allow the entire community that I'm working with to provide their input. And together, we co create this collective model of what to them is the system of science. What to them is the system of the red wiggler? What to them is the system of natural resources? And where are all the connections between our ecosystem, our social system, and our technological system? What is the system of paper making? So I'm asking these questions at every class, before every class. Whatever we're going to focus on that day, we start with a model. Subash is going to be presenting the community challenge, and he's going to be talking about the student entrepreneur projects. Students can make models as well. This is a model of lip balm system from a child's perspective. We have the students go through something very complicated, may look complicated to you, but young students are already system thinkers. They can, un they can go through a sustainability framework. During your challenge, you will have this to fill out. So we want you to look at this and use the system that third through sixth graders are using. We're also working on system dynamics modeling. Um, Naveed Najari from Arizona State University is here, and he'll be teaching a class at 1 o'clock, presenting the abstract and the research that we've done on system dynamics modeling with uh, third through sixth graders.